Hey guys. Hello, sorry I'm late. I just came in from another pool. Oh, that's sorry. fine. You're not late. You're on time. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. How's everyone? Um, yeah, almost, I guess. Oh, let me see your list. Okay, waiting for Shams. For Shams, okay. How are you guys doing? I'm doing well, how are you? Uh, it's going great. Uh, great? Yeah, mm -hmm. what about you Leila, how's it going? I'm a bit tired, actually. All right. Bad sleep. Sleep? Yeah. Did you have some? Did you have bad sleep? Maybe. Uh, how no. many hours do you usually sleep? Um, like in quarantine, like eight to nine, but oh. usually seven. That's enough, actually. Yeah. For being productive. All right. So I will try to energize you today. Just try to feel the energy I'm sending you through the camera. Can you feel it? Um, a little bit for now. <laughs> All right. Uh, I did my best. All right. Uh, good, guys. Um, so, Parvana, I've seen your video. That's a great job. It's, for, it's so informative. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, you can be a video blogger. Actually, guys, I will tell you something. If you want to start being an online teacher, the first step, create your blog. It can be a writing blog. It can be a video blog. So, Parvana, congratulations with the video. Um, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Yeah. How are you feeling? Um, fine. Are you ready for getting new information today? Yes. All right, let's get started. All right, guys. So the first question is going to be actually a warm up. I'll just uh, like to discuss it with you. Is a lesson planning important? Yes, no, why? Let's start from you, Leila. Um, I think yes, because like if you don't want to be confused in the middle of the class and that's why I think it's important and you will feel more comfortable and relaxed and more confident, I would say. That's why I think it's important. Like not uh, to structure everything in the class, but like just to have some outline, let's say. You're very close to the point of our today's training. Um, yeah, thank you so much for this idea, which is quite similar with the philosophy of our today's training. Uh, Sambia, let's continue with you. Um, yes, I think um, lesson planning is important because it gives the lesson some structure. Um, you can always um, you can always free for the lesson, but it, if you have oh sorry oh sorry I thought I'd lost you sorry. Um, I think so that you can always, so that you're always able to get uh, your objectives out at the end of the lesson. Perfect, perfect, great. Yeah. Uh, and here's Shams is joining us, right? Shams, are you with us? No answer. Just a moment. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I hope that you can hear me and we can, yeah. How are you Shams? Hey. Um, hi, sorry for being late that um, there was a problem about my computer. I restarting, restarting, and that's why I just joined um, yeah, a few minutes late. How are you feeling, Shams? Okay, I am bad. I'm in a hurry because uh, while I'm doing many things, I just, um, let's say, split out the water now. All right. Yeah. Shams, and do you know about the function of Zoom about sending energy? Look. I'm trying to send you some energy, some positiveness. Try to receive it. Can you feel it? Yeah, actually no, but I have tried to. Receive. Thank you for your honesty. Yeah, actually okay. it's impossible to send any energy through Zoom guys, but mm -hmm. it's possible to make some magic in your classes. So that's going to be in our Zoom training. 
hopefully. All right, so welcome, Shams. And the question is here, is a lesson planning important? Uh, I want you to answer it, Shams. Sorry? Uh, is a lesson planning important? Of course, lesson plan is uh, important. Sometimes I try to uh, do everything spontaneously, but I feel that it's not going, uh, let's say, very well. But uh, when I um, go by structure, it's easier. But uh, I just observed that when I'm ready, when I prepared everything, there is a problem about connection. So it's better to do sometimes spontaneously. All right. I have so many answers for you today, then. I will write it. Uh... Connection, okay, connection, mm -hmm. all right. Um, let's continue with, whom would I have? Pervana. Yeah, uh, have you answered this question? I guess not. No, actually okay. I agree with others. Uh, planning a list lesson is important, so you know what to do during the conversation, you prepare yourself. Uh, but uh, sometimes, uh, as Shams uh, mentioned, sometimes it happens, some bad luck. So you can just uh, ma uh, manage the conversation spontaneously. Sometimes it happens, but uh, lesson planning is important, I guess. And you guess right. Okay. Um, well, now we're going to go to our lovely whiteboard and try... Um, by discussing, find the main and the most important parts of lesson structure. Because to plan a lesson, you have to know lesson structure. Okay. So, we're going to speak about... Um, okay, if we, if we go so deep to the books and literature, yeah, this method is the communicative method. Right. So before it was uh, more reading oriented, but this is speaking communicative method. And in this method, we have this kind of lesson structure. First, we are starting with warm up. Warm up. That's the 10 minutes of your conversation. And. Oh, somebody is here. Yeah, our party is expanding. Uh, okay, uh, 10 minutes of your conversation. And what is important over here? Why do we need warm up? Yeah, on one hand, we can just start our conversation with our questions. Our topic is environment. Let's start with uh, which organizations uh, do you know which uh, stand for um, saving of our environment yeah that can be your first question because it's written like this in your topic you just ask questions uh, but without warm-up for your students it will be harder and harder start this conversation what can be warm-up let's try to find the types of warm-up we can find it can be games okay so here I can give you some recommendations, guys, but I want you to work on yourself. Go to the internet and find some games you can play on, the, on any class, actually. Um, most of them are offline. Try to find the adaptive to online, which you can play by sharing your screen, by showing something, drawing something. That can be a game. For example, my game is, which I can play online, uh, that should be Hangman, I think. Yeah, so I can play this with you if you want. <laughs> uh, it can be for BA1, A2, yeah, an age group of maximum 13 years, I guess, yeah. So they will accept it. Um, adults, they would say, sorry, but maybe we can do something more serious. So that's why we have other warm-ups for adults okay <laughs> i'm bad at drawing guys i'll just warn you yeah here we have hangman yeah so we're just drawing that now we don't need to do that and we have 
for instance, for lettons, for lettons. Yeah, and here I have S. Mm, and here I have W. Uh, okay, any suggestions about letters? Uh, for Vana, I think you can find the word. You can get the price of today's conversation. Yeah, any ideas what can be there? We have S and W. Okay, I'm thinking actually, I have no clue. Okay, maybe you have a letter to tell us. Maybe it's slow. Slow? Okay. Uh, I'll accept one letter from your answer and I'll write here, not zero, but O. Okay, it's not slow, but it's something else. Something N. that most of people don't like. N. Yeah. N. 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 For, N for November. Show me your Same B. And you are the winner. <laughs> Yeah, so the <laughs> only present I can send you through online is my energy. So just receive it. Uh, I'm receiving it. Okay. Got it. Great. So guys, that's a little game we can play with our students before starting our lesson. Yeah, being energetic, giving some energy through Zoom, and your group is ready to be stretched out. Your group is ready for new words. Your group is ready for any questions you're going to ask them because they're warm up. Yeah, they feel energy. Okay, for example, hangman, yeah. Um, then I have one more, but that is a bit long to show. It's called bomb game. Yeah, I'll just tell you, maybe you can use it. Uh, okay, so you have a timer or, yeah, that is a timer and you just put there one minute and you say, Within one minute, you have to tell me words related with street. Anything you can find on the, uh, on the street. Tell me words, one by one. And you just create some um, turn. Yeah, for example, first Parvana, then Leila, then Shams. And you have to say one by one words related with the street. Um, yep. And the last one, the last person who is not going to find this word, and one minute is going to, uh, to be gone, then we have the loser. The bomb is going to explode yeah, on this person. So offline I play it with my uh, lovely ball, which I always make when I come to the class. It is like bomb game and I'm just throwing it and they have to throw it like a bomb because it's going to explode in one minute. Okay, um, games, then brainstorming uh, before starting your uh, lessons it's very important to prepare your um, students not just with the games yeah games they're just opening the um, let's say their energy yeah their readiness for your lessons but also awareness about topic yeah so for instance if you have topic of childhood yeah, um, you can just tell them, ask them about their favorite toy. Yeah, just a little question. Tell me about your favorite toy. Yeah, and then you can say, could you describe it? Yeah, so they will just warm up their description skills. Yeah, if it's A2, describing for them is not a big problem, for example. It can be very good for A2, brainstorming. And then you just slowly change to your topic because your topic is about childhood and you ask about toy, which is actually associated with that. Okay, um, so importance of warm up, as I've told you already, it open up their muscles over here as well when they start speaking about things, it is not so hard for them to speak. And also with their energy, they're ready to accept what you're going to give them. Stage number two. I am like a Hollywood dubbing. Okay. Um, stage number two. Um, but before, I'm really sorry. Before going to stage number two, we have some middle stage. So middle stage between warm up and presentation is introduction. 
for introduction we have maximum guys maximum two minutes don't speak so much yeah try to give this opportunity <clears throat> to your students okay so in introduction you just say some words which is introducing your topic your idea maybe yeah um some examples you can give and then introduce them your topic say the name uh, and just uh, say your idea about it and that's the introduction two minutes maximum uh, and then we're coming to presentation presentation that's the biggest part uh 40 minutes okay so if i write here 40 minutes guys again it's, it doesn't mean that you have to do it exactly 40 minutes right if you can do it for 30 minutes yeah you can spend less energy right uh, but then you have to think about other stages how to make them more productive okay um so in presentation yeah it's just not something new i'm going to tell you you're going to ask your questions you're going to um, drill the vocabulary which you have, teach it, yeah, explain it, show it visually, as I've told you before. All these things are going to be in your presentation. You're presenting your topic now. Okay, and then we have some, again, middle stage between that. It is sum up. For sum up, we again have maximum two minutes, guys. Again, your concluding idea about your topic. Concluding idea from the answers you've got on this conversation, yeah? So your idea and your task, yeah, on this sum up, it just take all the answers, conclude them, say your idea also about it, and finish the topic. Okay, and then we have about six minutes, but I would recommend you to try to get even more than six minutes, uh, 10 minutes. It is feedbacking. Let's say six minutes. Well, with that, if it plus at all, we have one hour, right? And of course, if you have one hour and 30 minutes, um, then you have to expand these things. You have to do more things. Okay, so feedbacking, guys. Um, this one is very important because you're going to deliver your feedbacks, which you've had during the lesson. Um, some words about feedback. As I've told you before, um, that giving feedbacks during your lesson, it can be a not so good idea because you lose the time from the presentation yeah you can just take all your feedbacks and leave it for feedback session which you have 10 minutes right and with that you will do everything you want yeah just think about it if you give feedback during the presentation how much time uh you're actually spending on that and as a fact wasting all right that is the feedbacking we're going to speak more about feedbacks uh, later on, I guess. Let me see if I have it today. Yep, I have it. And also, we're going to come back to feedbacking in the roles of a teacher. Okay. And that's all. Yeah, and that's our lesson. Um, and of course, at the end of the lesson, we're going to say warm thanks to them. Uh, then rewarding, appreciating, saying thank you so much for the conversation. And never ever forget about any questions or feedbacks. Well, at the courses, guys, I'll be honest with you. If you go to courses, um, the, their syllabus, it's so tense. You cannot be so flexible with that all. And 
even you don't have time for getting feedbacks, right? But on this platform, you have a great chance to get feedback, to analyze it and get better. Because again, we can speak about a lot of things, but still it counts to the thing. Do you know your student, right? So you have to know your student and try to adapt to their needs. Okay. All right. Let me see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I've told you about warm ups. Okay, so after knowing the structure of your lesson, here we can come um, to the point how to plan a lesson. Yeah, so from your ideas, I maybe got the thing that you feel that planning it's some uh, special document which is packed to the folder and you take it and you just open it and see one by one what you're going to do well but i also leila emphasized that she pointed that sometimes you don't need to put so much effort on your planning we will come to this point as well so your planning can be that small just a sticker guys or just a paper <laughs> so you know the structure and you write number one. Oh, let me just show it to you over here what i'm doing <laughs> okay so that is the lesson planning that's small okay number one warm up yeah you just you don't even need to write warm up just write warm and then right here, hanged man. Yeah, and to be good at this, yeah, to be good at finding very good planning, less than for 30 seconds, yeah, you can just think, okay, uh -huh, all right, uh, they, they like this game, yeah, before, or one group like this game, so I'm right, writing here, hangman. That is your number one. And it can take you 10 minutes, right? Or even uh, you can play, for example, five minutes hangman, then you can ask some question, brainstorming. And then you can just write here, brains, yeah. And number two, presentation, you can just put it like this, yeah, because you know that there's going to be some questions, yeah. Or if you have some time, um you can look up for the questions you can see what you're going to have you can plus and minus questions you wouldn't like to ask because they're a bit weird to you right and you think that your students are not going to comprehend it well yeah so you can just take the vocabulary that you have uh, on these questions and create some of your questions which can be more interesting than the questions you have there uh planning done uh over here for presentation then sum up then feedbacking well that's all your planning uh do you think that with this kind of planning you cannot finish already one hour lesson what do you think about this guys is that something we can use um efficiently and as a result effectively uh, let's start from leila i think yes because like i prepare the questions every time and I try to choose questions carefully and like related to our country and culture most of the time. And yeah, and also I mm -hmm. like make sure that I have enough right. amount, like enough number of questions. So I, I don't okay. worry that much. Okay. So yeah. So then you can start using it. So it can be just a little piece of paper, as I told you guys. Um, yeah. So let's continue. What about you, Sambi? What are your ideas about it? Is this something we can use? Um, yeah, definitely. I, this is something that I will actually use. Um, uh, I think, uh, sorry? Uh, great. I, I mean, yeah. Could you, could you tell us uh, a bit about your experience using this? Using the method? Usually, um, from my experience, I haven't used something so structured. All right. So it's usually yeah. So it's some it's half and half. So it's like a structured um 
how do I say it's a structured, not so structured lesson, if that makes sense. All right. All right. I got you. Thank you for sharing yes, the experience. Same structured lesson. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you for sharing your experience once again. Um, and guys, so we have a lot of things here. Let's just continue. Yeah. I have a lot of questions for all of us today. Um, all right. So let me see what we have here. Yeah. I've told you about everything you can do in all of the stages. Yeah. So your goal is to make them speak, not make them answer your questions. So what is that guys? Um, Speaking class is all about enable your students to speak, right? And if you have some student which is anxious and cannot tell you much about the topic you're introducing, then your second plan B is to make him speak. Because if the person is going to be quiet all the lesson, then you're not going to get the, any result from this lesson, right? So if you see that you cannot get something more which you set for this conversation, it's not something bad, yeah. Your goal is to make them speak, right? For the students who can speak, you give this opportunity. For other students, you also pay attention to make them speak somehow. Okay. Um, important during presentation. Uh, let me save it, yeah, and let, look closely to presentation part let me just clean it all okay important during presentation oh i <laughs> presentation okay yeah okay one Uh, don't forget about body language. That is what we had uh, in our last class, right? So whenever you have your presentation, use body language. Don't forget about body language. I want to write, don't forget about your body. Uh, okay. Number two, let me see. Uh, don't don't be afraid to go out of the topic uh, in your presentation. You know that uh, when we have some anxious or silent people, we have to go out of the topic to get them from this comfort zone and make them speak. So that's why if you ask some questions which is not related to the conversation, for your students, it's not, it doesn't mean some demotivation or something. They see that you're trying to drill the student, right? And you want to enable the student to speak. Okay. Uh, don't be afraid to go off topic. Yeah. Uh, the another point when the student goes uh, out of the topic, yeah, it can be talkative people, right? It can be professors, yeah, we know these types, yeah, how they can act. Um, give them some opportunity to speak if they need, yeah, but limit their time again. Here you have to be a, a kind of controller. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, try to connect your questions with students that's a bit long students interest what is that you can have uh, very difficult questions but connecting them to students uh, interest is always possible so we've seen it on our simulation i remember sambi she was trying to connect, for example, traveling. All right, so when you travel, how much, okay, if you want to travel, how much money do you save yeah, for that? So she's connecting traveling with her next question. Great. Uh, four, 
let me see what I have here. Okay, encourage uh, students to use vocabulary you need to teach. Okay, so if we go to the, let me share with you our simulation. Uh, you can see that in this conversation, I also prepared for you some vocabulary, right? And you might be surprised to see that we have to drill vocabulary during presentation, not before, yeah, but Teaching vocabulary as a warm up, it's not the best idea, guys. Teaching vocabulary during presentation, that is the thing we want to do. Um, and encourage them to speak. Your uh, new vocabulary should be in your questions, so they have to answer that. Um, your vocabulary can be in your advices and examples when you speak. Your vocabulary can be um, in your support when you say, well, you can use here spent, yeah? You want to say that you give money and buy something. So you can use spent. And spent, it is, and you explain this vocabulary very shortly, and they continue. Okay, then uh, be careful with giving feedbacks during presentation, yeah? So uh, I, didn't tell you don't use them, right? I told you that it's not recommendable to use them during presentation. No, no, no. Yeah, be careful with giving feedback because feedback can take a lot of time sometimes when you try to correct a student, then you try to explain something, then you try to go to some other grammar structures, and in your presentation, you just allocate some time for grammar lessons, yeah. I've had this experience, yeah. I've had a student, he was 67 years old, and uh, he wanted just to speak about grammar, right? So I've had lessons one hour explaining grammar instead of speaking with this per person. But I was trying to put also, for example, okay, so there is a run. Now, um, is there anything interesting in your life? Or, <laughs> I don't know, something like that, yeah? Um, okay. Okay, so set turns. Okay, so one of the things, number six, uh, set turns to control uh, speaking flow. Okay, setting turns is very important, guys. Uh, you have to know who is first, who is then, who is in the round, yeah, who is in, in the circle of your speaking. And if you're not doing this, it can uh, lead and it can cause that you forget to ask someone, yeah. When someone's like, ah, teacher, uh, you forgot to ask me. And and this, yeah, and these are, oh, mm, sorry, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's why. Try to uh, write again here or somewhere here. When you meet students first time, for example, look, I have <laughs> all the information about you over here. Everything you've told me. Leila, economic, no experience. Uh, no, that, that is what you said, Echo, you have to regain your experience. Then Rufat, management, tourism, working. Shams, okay, love teaching, uh, okay. And you're education specialist, okay. And Sam Beef, yeah, I just wrote that she's cool, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, right, so that's why setting that, and also you can control speaking flow, as we said, with your gestures, signal gestures, yeah. Mm, with your tone of voice. All right, uh, we have one more close here, uh, but we're going to regard it 
on our lesson, which were not lesson, sorry, training, which we're going to have about roles of a teacher. So there we're going to say uh, how to try to be a role model as a teacher. Okay. So that's all about that. And in short, guys, just some ideas. If you have something to add to this list, what else it's important to do during presentation? Okay, very short, some ideas. Uh, let's start from you, Sabuhi. Actually, uh, I don't have any ideas else. All right. Uh, Okay, so do you like uh, this uh, thing? Like, do you like this cloud? Yeah, I like this okay. plan structure. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope uh, I can use them during teaching. Of course, of course. I believe in your potential. Good. Uh, let's continue with Pervana. So, Pervana, uh, would you like to add something to this? What is important during presentation? I don't know actually, I have no idea. I think it's good structure. Okay, it's just some advices, right? Some advices. It's not something you have to do or, yeah. Uh, during this presentation, uh, actually uh, during the conversation, I try to make uh, some type dialogue. I don't like that, for example, I give the question, yeah. I ask them and first student answer, then I just uh, ask the second student. I don't like this style. Uh, during the conversation, I ask the question uh, to the first student and I try to make a dialogue with them. I ask, uh, I don't know, uh, off the topic question sometimes, then we are making a dialogue. Okay, so everything you've told me, I uh, created a new clause for us, and that is try to transfer your questions into a simulation. Okay, that's what, what you wanted to tell, right? Um, so yeah, if you have some questions, yeah, something like, so, something that you can transfer to some simulation between two students or all students, yeah, and you can just sit like this and observe how they, do the simulation, right? For example, you speak about shopping and then you can say, okay, so Ali, maybe you can be a cashier or a salesperson and you can be a customer and you can just try to do something like uh, you're buying a, a pair of jeans. Yeah, try it. Yeah, it can yeah. work. It can work. It can work and it will make uh, the conversation more interesting. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, Parvana, for this. Any other ideas, guys? I'm not going to go to the turns and tell. If you have any ideas, yeah, just let me know. Uh, I just personally prefer to give the feedbacks about pronunciation during the, it's, I'm not adding something, just I like to give the feedback about pronunciation during the presentation, but all other feedbacks at the end of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, then um, I will tell actually, you. Actually, uh, I, I just uh, know that the, it's a waste of time to give feedback during the conversation, but uh, especially in elementary groups, I always give feedback during conversation because sometimes they are doing such kind of mistakes that um, it's hard to stay silent, and that's why. Mm -hmm. Guys, uh, then for you not to... Uh, not to, lose, not to lose fluency of the conversation going, uh, you can do mirroring feedbacks. What is that? For example, I tell, uh, uh, and we has uh, a big house, and you say, uh-huh, we have a big house. Okay, and then continue, yeah? So you just repeat it, but correctly, yeah? The person unconsciously takes it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had a friend, he, didn't know anything about English and he started watching serials and uh, different movies in English without knowing anything and he didn't anything anything he didn't use any uh, subtitles and 
in one year his English was something like A2 about listening and speaking. If you ask him about present continuous, he say, what, what the hell is that? But he is using present continuous. Yeah. So that's why that is very important when you just structure, not structure, but um, let's say discipline yourself about studying English. If you work on yourself every day, two movies in English. What is that? It's unconscious attacking of your brain. <laughs> okay. All right. What else I have here for you? Mm -hmm. Okay, I've told you about sum up what you can do there. Uh -huh. And also, yeah, I've pointed one more thing in sum up. So I think, do you have any other ideas about the presentation, guys? Anything that you would love to add? Actually, two points which you added, they are just amazing. Good job, guys. Thank you for helping me. Um, okay, let's save it. Let's save this pressure. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, I'll sum up. Also, it's very good when you sum up and count all the words that you studied today. And you say, you say their meaning. Yeah, you say some examples about them. So it just, consult, uh, it just let's say, uh, make their knowledge about this uh, stronger, right? Because you repeat it and you revise it. Feedbacking. Here we're coming to feedbacking, guys. Presentation is done, sum up is done. Now we have to feedback. Uh, to tell all the points which we pointed in our, which we took uh, as a note. Um, first, um, during a lesson, actually feedbacking, the beginning of this feedbacking starts with your presentation, yeah? So during the presentation, you have to be a very good listener. If you don't want to stop the fluency of your students, you have to listen and find the mistakes. Try to categorize them. Yeah, mainly mistake with have, has, right? Or uh, present continuous, uh, use bad or something. And you just summarize this all on a piece of paper and then you give feedbacks. Number one, don't personalize feedbacks. Don't say, for example, Ali, today you've had a lot of mixed days with have and has. No, say that. So guys, the main thing that we found today about your mistakes is that usage of have and has is good for everyone to hear it. Yeah. And this person will take it anyway, because when we speak English in A2, we analyze everything we say. Yeah. Now, when I speak with you, I'm not analyzing what I'm speaking, right? I just know that it's the idea and I deliver it in English. But in A2, they just have, has, or oh, I'll say has. Uh, we has, uh, and he speaks, and then at the end of conversation, you say, so with have and has, remember, he, she, has, you with it, with they, have. And they're like, oh my God, that was a mistake over here, right? unconsciously, maybe he's not going to think about it, yeah? But we are working deeper. Okay. So, you don't personalize feedbacks. Mm -hmm. If the lesson is individual, it's impossible not to personalize it, right? <laughs> if you have just Ali in your conversation, it's, it will be a bit <laughs> weird to say that, okay, I'm not going to personalize my feedbacks, but Ali, you're the only one here. <laughs> okay. And here we have the solution. Hamburger feedback. Sounds yummy, right? Yeah, if it sounds yummy, then you can give it to your student to try it. And here we have first layer, second layer. And let's make the middle layer like a cheese in Big Mac. Okay, that's our hamburger, some digital hamburger. And here we write positive feedback. 
that is the first you give. Then negative feedback about the mistakes, about all these gaps. Yeah, which is needed. If you think that this person can develop the skill by himself and you know that he's going to use better hat tomorrow, you don't need to tell it, it can demotivate this person. And again, positive feedback. So with giving this kind of hamburger feedback, guys, uh, we can hide negative feedback unconsciously. So you start. Uh, well, Ali, I really liked your fluency today. You were quite fast. And it's way faster than in our last conversation. You're really developing. Are you working on yourself? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then you come back and you say, okay, but the things I would love to emphasize is about have and has. Yes, yeah, so he, she, remember? He, she, it has, right, has. Uh, are you with a have? Have, good job, Ali. That is negative and then positive again that you can remember the things really easily. I believe in you and I believe in your potential. So just keep it, keep it up. That's your hamburger feedback. You said all the negative things you want to say, but you hide it between positiveness. Um, okay. So I will save uh, my masterpiece of drawing hamburgers. Uh, okay. Saved. And we will clean it all and see what we have here. Yeah, so as, as I've told you, um, thanks, then rewards, then appreciating. Thank you so much. It was really great. You're amazing. Okay, don't go so deep. Yeah, it can be, <laughs> it can look a bit like that you are, I don't know, you want to thank everyone in the world. Uh, then the end. And before that, you try to ask like any questions, Ali. Do you have any questions? Or do you have any feedbacks? Maybe you can do something better next time. And he said, mm, I like this game. Yeah, Hangman. Very good game. Very good game. Okay. Uh, and now I want to speak to you guys. Improvisation versus plan. So we've, we've spoken about the structuring. Yeah, which sounds a bit boring as a word structure. But improvisation, it sounds more fun. So I would love to ask you just, is it good? Is it even important to use improvisation on our classes? Uh, let's start from you, Leila. Do we need to use improvisation in our classes? Um, I wouldn't say necessarily improvisation, but Sometimes something unexpected can happen. For example, uh, in one of my like previous conversations, we had the topic stereotypes, but the guys didn't know anything about stereotypes, so they didn't know the meaning of this word. So how can I, can I speak about this topic when they even don't know anything about the topic? So uh, we started by watching a video about stereotypes so they had it was a short video they had some idea and then we um, we started to talk about the topic but it wasn't like in my plan beforehand yeah so you improvised <laughs> yes somehow i would say i would say it's a good warm-up yeah for their listening right yeah. So anyway, guys, teaching English is not about speaking, right? It's about uh, developing the core skills, which, which they have. And even if you have some, in the future, we'll um, see how we can work with articles and use them for our conversations. Um, okay, uh, let's continue with sh uh, Shams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is yeah. important to use improvisation in our classes. 
Yeah, it's so important, I guess, that uh, in many cases that uh, people aren't aware of the topic, what are we going to do? And we have to just change question immediately. For example, uh, one of uh, my previous conversations, it was about Princess Diana, and uh, just one person uh, had knowledge about who is Diana and about um, her, and I have to change topic, princess, kingdom, United Kingdom, uh, Kingdom, England, so it's so important. Mm -hmm. It's good that you give some associations, yeah? You just mm -hmm. Associations and then they have some idea. Good, good job. Um, all right. Sambi, what do you think? Do we need to improvise uh, on our lessons? Um, I think improvising is good depending on the level you're teaching. So I think if you're teaching beginners, I think it would have to be very structured and you have to be quite prepared for it. Um, in the sense that um, people who are learning English for the first time are quite nervous about it. So if you're out there trying to um, look around for videos or going through your notes and stuff and looking unprepared, it makes them nervous. And in turn, you also won't be so um, comfortable until you settle into the lesson. So I think um, it depends on the level you're, te you're teaching. On the level your teacher right? Teacher. Thank you. So that's going to be uh, the main statement about, uh, oh, sorry, about improvisation. Thank you for sharing it. So improvisation depends on the level you're teaching. That's so true. I totally agree with that. Uh, for, um, for kid classes, you have to be more prepared. Yeah. And you have to be more flexible rather than with advanced um, students, right? Okay, so let's put it here as a central statement. Okay, uh, let's continue with... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Parvana, what do you think about it? Uh, <clears throat> I guess uh, improvisation uh, depends on the situation maybe. Actually, I have never used improvisation during the conversation. So, um, maybe it depends on the topic or the knowledge of the students about the topic. So, we can use uh, improvisation sometimes. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much for your idea. So, okay, in short, please. So, uh, <coughs> what do you think about it, improvisation? Actually, uh, I don't have... Uh enough experience about teaching, uh, but uh, I prefer to do everything according to plan. But of course, if any student uh, don't ha doesn't have enough knowledge about the topic, and in this case, uh, I need improvisation uh, to say about or just cool. learn anything, right. give any idea. Cool. And talk. Okay, okay, so Buhi, yeah, that was a great idea as well. Um, and here we have what we can do during the improvisation. We can have um, 5W plus H. Yeah, that is about mainly about WH questions and about changing them, about changing question words, and also, also adding how. Yeah, so let's not to forget about this uh, guy. And here we have, for instance, you have do you work yeah it's just a rough example guys uh where do you work why do you work <laughs> uh when do you work right so and this improvisation stops when you just got lost can help you right then you just okay i'm out of questions i can try 5w yeah so it can work um, sarcasm. <laughs> well, with this, you can be, uh, you have to be actually careful because sometimes sarcasm can harm your students. But jokes, if you know some trend joke, which can be implemented in English, yeah, most of time, something in Azerbaijani when translated to English, it can be really a uh, blasting joke. <laughs> yeah, and most of time. Yeah, for instance, uh, when my students say, uh, teacher, how to say, uh, let's say, tabiat, and I say, 
um, caveat, uh, and they start laughing. <laughs> uh, of course, it's not caveat, yeah? It would be so easy, yeah? If all the Azerbaijani words, you can say tabiat, nejasan, and you have English, right, with you. No, it doesn't work like this, and they start, start laughing. So just, I don't know, just improvise with that, yeah? And with that, you can increase with jokes and sarcasm, if, if it's a good sarcasm. Uh, you can increase the energy yeah, during the conversation. Okay, so with that, you can also fill some time, yeah, which you, you see that you've planned everything for one hour, but they were so fast in everything they did. So you have five minutes again, yeah, so you have to finalize in five minutes, but you're out of everything, yeah, because you wasn't controlling time, yeah. And you can start improvise. <laughs> okay. So much planning can make a robot-like class. Yeah, and so when you plan everything, even with kids, so much, then in one moment you can feel that you are a robot. Just planning, okay, next one this, and this, okay. And you just start, yeah. So just have a little piece of paper. Just know what you're going to do in short. You have your questions and have fun. Okay, required materials are for you, not for students. So required materials is the materials we get before we have conversation, for example, or even when we have class. Yeah, when, we, when we're teaching grammar and all four skills. Um, yeah. Um, so, when you have required materials, it doesn't mean it's something to work with the student. It means that's for you. You take it, then the second stage, you as a teacher, to build your lesson more efficient is adapted. And then it comes to student or students. You have to be a middleman about adapting the material. Because if it's not going to be adapted, there can be two ways. I don't say that it's going to be chaos, right? I don't say that. It can work. But from my experience, most of time, you have to know your student, adapt the material to them, for them to feel more comfortable. Yeah, because when they see that, you're just with the book, the stereotypes comes and they think that they're at school. But when they see that the book is over there, you just sometimes approach it just to see what's going on. And then you deliver something else, something very close to their interests, something very close to them. Um, and another problem we can have, uh, let's write here. And then, yeah, uh, required materials are for you, not for students. So, adapt them and then give it to students. It's, it's, let's say, a recommendable way, right? If you don't have time, then try to improvise during the lesson, what you can add. But sometimes we're asking ourselves, there is a zera, let's say. We want to use it during our conversation. We have uh, A1, lesson five. Yeah, we don't know. We just know that this guy was in five lessons in my course. Should I use Arizona? Well, for this, we have very good document which can help you. That is CEFR. It is Common European Framework of References. What is that? Well, simply speaking, it is the levels which we say A1, A2, right? It's all structured with CEFR. Let me share it to you. Let me just show it to you. But first I need to open it. All right, give me 
some time guys let's save it first yeah okay um, where is it? yeah let me find it and that should be good okay now let me share it yeah that is so uh, yeah let me hide it cfr and here you can see what topics can be in a1 due to um this framework what can be in A2, B1, yeah. So I don't want you to learn by heart. Yeah, don't spend your time. But I want you just to have a little idea about what can be in B1, what kind of things I can push on, what kind of things I can challenge, yeah. So I'm sending this nice documents to you so you can have it. Just a moment. I hope that is possible to send this somehow. Where is the chat? Uh huh. Okay. Your computer. And that is the thing. Yeah. So you can download it, guys. That's the last thing I wanted to tell you. Thank you so much for the training. I feel how productive it was. And I feel that at the end, Leila has all energy at center. Okay. And I feel that it was really good, guys. So do you have any questions you would love to ask? Nope. I don't have a question, but I especially like the any questions part because I have never asked any questions in the end of the conversation. All right. But I'm going to do after our training. And any feedback, so guys? Any feedback? Yeah. <laughs> so now, now, now you can know that I structure everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I say any feedbacks, and you're like, hmm, he structured that. He has it here. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Okay. So thank you so much for the conversation, guys. Oh, uh, conversation. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, for the conversation. We we're just uh, uh, conversing, just discussing. And I'll see you on Friday, right? So see yes. you. Have a nice day. See you. Have Bye. fun. Have fun. Life is short. Bye. Bye.